Welcome back. Last week was our final episode in Spain, where we discovered the source of Europe's favourite non-caffeinated breakfast drink, and tasted the true flavours of Valencia. So we bid adios to España, and say bonjour to France, a country whose name I've learned to pronounce a little differently outside of Australia, where the preferred pronunciation is France. Armed with a new drone we've named Berdinand, we venture into the heart of the historic Occitani, just north of the borders of the Languedoc wine region, to Roquefort, home of the legendary cheese. There are actually nine places in the south of France called Roquefort, no doubt leading to more than a few confused foodie tourists. Following the mighty River Tarn, past more gratuitous drone footage, we were lucky enough to find the right one, Roquefort sur Soulzon, perched on a hillside above a breathtaking valley. Roquefort the cheese is one of the three great blues, alongside English Stilton and Italian Gorgonzola, an ancient cheese enjoyed by Julius Caesar, Pliny the Elder, and Charlemagne. Roquefort was declared king of cheeses by actual king Charles VI of France, who declared Roquefort sur Soulzon protected grounds. Made exclusively from sheep's milk on 2,000 farms across the Lazic Plain, cheeses must all be aged in the caves below the village, and are distributed by one of only seven authorised dealers. A mould related to the one in your antibiotics, called Penicillium roqueforti, is responsible for the deep blue-green veins. Occurring naturally in the caves, it is actually grown on mouldy bread, which is powdered and injected into the ageing cheeses. Depending on how long it's aged, it gets stinkier, sharper, and saltier with time. I made my way through a selection at Gabriel Coulet. And this final one here, uh, Casteville, is 27 months aged, which makes it the oldest Roquefort in the world. Can you give this one a go? This one should be quite a treat. Mmm. That has a ve wow, very strong very sharp tang to it. So if you like your uh, Roquefort with a bit of punch, that's the one I would recommend. So I'm here on the cliffs just above Roquefort. You can see just over here. And I'm finishing off making my omelette. I did have um, an egg flip, but it got stolen by a wild animal the other day, uh, which is not ideal. Now, Roquefort can be quite intense, quite overpowering. So, we're just going to crumble a little bit of it in there. Okay, so now I'm just going to flip it over with a spatula. Now we have the, uh, the omelette there. <laughs> oh god, I'm going to make a mess of it. Fantastic. It's a really nice, mild carrier for a very strong, tangy cheese and uh, is a really nice way to approach a cheese if you, uh, if you don't like the more intense flavours. So thanks again for joining us, and next week we will be continuing up through the centre of France to Dijon uh, in the Burgundy region, so the home of uh, the famous mustard. Make sure you try one of these at home, and in the meantime, remember, there's nothing quite as satisfying as eating local food. Bon appétit! <laughs>